a lot of diversity in, in your thinking about AI. I don't see people talking about machine learning from a cultural standpoint that much. It's usually, as you said, like the Terminator robot kind of image. Um, why do you think you look at it in a sort of different way about onboarding? It seems like a much more practical, cultural kind of thought. I think it's because I've been doing it for a long time. So I really understood it starting 25 years ago and working on AI. And I really, it's, it's less scary when you understand computers and what's actually happening behind the scenes and you know how it can be controlled. And so when you start seeing, okay, this is something, you know, when I was working on it back then, it's really the realm of scientists. And uh, this is something that can really happen now and impact our lives in a positive way. But to do that, we need to understand it and be engaged with it. So it, it's the cultural thing. Now that it's possible to bring it to the mainstream, if you will, it's the cultural thing that will make it be a good thing for us. Do you think that uh, the fact that people have access to like a Siri or a Cortana or a Google Now is informing, is it changing the, the nature of discussions about machine learning and AI? Well, you know, you're the one that's always so good with quotes, but who's the guy who quoted and said, once it's, um, once it's regularly used, it's no longer AI, it's just a program. <laughs> so I think people actually don't think about the fact that Siri is actually AI. That's not something that's at the forefront. So I, I don't, you know, once it's past that point, I'm not sure that people get that. It does help when you explain that to them and then they go, oh, you know, I didn't think about that. But yeah, it is kind of nice. And then they talk about, well, it's not that good. I have these problems. It's like, yeah, I know. This is why we need to do more of it. This is why we need people engaged. This is why it isn't about just going and grabbing some, you know, stock machine learning algorithms off the shelf. It's about what do we create for this instance? So uh, you talked about what happens the day AI comes to work, like onboarding AI. But let's talk about the first week and then the first month of AI because when Tesla shipped their self-driving cars, the first day, those cars were not very good. There were reports that they weren't cornering well or that they were trying to take the wrong exit. But because there was a feedback loop, within a week, they had learned from the driver taking control at certain points and they got dramatically better. And so it seems to me like the thing that we don't, we, we talk a lot about the first day of the machine on the job, but the first month of the machine on the job as it learns, what happens when that coworker who is a little weird that just joined the company is suddenly the most important person in the company? Yeah, it's funny. My uh, my actions to take as you onboard number four is expect mistakes, and uh, that one is uh, a lot of people don't know, but um, Deep Blue actually won against Kasparov because Kasparov um, got really flustered with the mistake that Deep Blue had made. And he kept on thinking, oh, Deep Blue has to know, it has to know, there's something I'm missing. It made that move on purpose and it actually chose that move randomly. And so I think that what we need to do is expect those mistakes and, and treat the algorithm like we do an employee. How do we nurture them? How do we learn? How do we correct them when they make those mistakes and be a hands-on manager? And the other thing I'd say is, um, start small, so this isn't something that you just go, okay, well, here's the keys to everything machine. Go solve all of that for us. Start small, I use uh, the analogy that actually rocket science isn't that complicated, it's very well understood, and, but executing a space program is complicated. So think about this as executing a space program and go step by step and start small and then add all the pieces together so you know what each component is doing. So, And I think you do that a lot with employees anyway, right? It's like, okay, well, I'm going to see how they do on this project, and once they do well on that project, then we'll expand that and see see where they need support and where they don't. And so I, I think thinking of the algorithms, not just the robots, but thinking of the algorithms as people and how do we nurture them and, and learn and let them learn is the way we're going to get there. So in the Tesla case, you had thousands of people providing real-time updated information in real time. It seems to me like if you're a human boss trying to nurture this new coworker AI, giving it information in human time frames doesn't allow it to really learn as fast. Whereas in the Tesla case, they give information in machine time frames across thousands of sources of input. Um, how do you give the machine feedback? Don't you have to like hook it into some kind of virtuous loop where it learns whether or not it's like a, a price optimization algorithm or something? Yep. Don't you have to sort of give it programmatic feedback rather than sitting down with it at the end of the Friday and saying, listen, you know, I wasn't really happy with your work this week? <laughs> 
you, I, I would say both. You know, I, I'd look at I'd look at how do we do programmatic. So a lot of A/B testing is a great programmatic way. Gosh, did it do better? When did it do worse? What What are those cases? Let's iterate on those cases and improve that and make it better. Mm -hmm. Right. That's A/B testing is good programmatic feedback. Right, sure. So you have a lot of opportunities like that to figure that out. And and you know, failure states are another good one when you think of IIoT. Um, you've got a lot of sensors out there in the industrial case, and what all information can I take? Not just what that is sensing, but all of the information about around what it's sensing. What's the temperature there? How much was it used today? What you know? What manufacturer was this? What timeline? Which lot did it come in? All of that information also has to be fed in. It's not just the one data point that comes periodically. It's all of that information around it. So. I think people don't realize how much data they actually have that can be fed into the feedback loop, and then you decide right. whether it's programmatic or on some kind of regular interval to do the learning. Yeah, uh, Christopher Nguyen said something about the only reason to collect big data is to give the machine something to chew on, which is a good way of putting Maybe. it, right? Because there's exactly. so much data there. Um, so one last question. Um, we talked about a few use cases yesterday. Um, and you mentioned that in some cases, I mean, people tend to think of machine learning algorithms as applied to customer-facing front office stuff, but you were talking about using it to try and improve employee satisfaction. Can you talk about yeah. some of the unusual use cases you've seen? Yeah, I was so excited about that when we got calls from potential customers and they've engaged with us. And um, one of them is looking at uh, claims in, in the insurance. And they didn't call and say, oh, we want to reduce our claims rate or you know whatever. Um, uh, or amount paid, they called and said, we actually want to make our claims or agents happier. There's high turnover. It's a really, it is a stressful job. And we want to figure out how to make them happier. And it, some of them like to work on cases with kids and others of them like to work on cases that are really complicated. And some of them like the high turnover. And we want to be able to do that based on very little information coming in. Obviously, we don't always know everything about what the case is going to be like. How do we assign that to the right person to make our employees happier? Wow. Which is, yeah, it's a really cool yeah. use case. So the employee comes to work and then winds up working in HR, which is great. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, for, for being at Strata Singapore uh, and Hadoop World and uh, for making the trip, but also just for thinking about a lot of this stuff. It's really nice to see somebody who's looking at the sort of humanistic side of, of machine learning as well. Well, thank you. And Strata is just always a great place to be. I mean, whether it's uh, London, New York, San Jose, uh, here in Singapore now this time. I, the curation that's done with the speakers and the community that you build is just amazing. I rave to people about it all the time, so thank you all. Awesome.